Six weeks of daily earthquakes have rattled the ground beneath Naples as Campi Flegre shows signs of breaking under pressure. Authorities remember the chaos of past evacuations. One saw 40,000 people displaced with no eruption. But this time, the swarms are growing stronger, and historic trauma shapes every decision. If the warning signs aren't trusted now, what will it take to move an entire city sitting atop a restless supervolcano? Every morning for more than 40 days, the ground beneath Naples has trembled. Seismographs register hundreds of earthquakes each week, some so faint only machines detect them, others strong enough to rattle windows and send residents out into the streets. The swarm peaked with a magnitude 3.3 event, but the pattern has not faded. If anything, it is intensifying. In June 2025, Campi Flegre produced a magnitude 4.6 earthquake. It was the strongest ever recorded here, shattering the previous record and jolting nerves across the region. That quake was not an isolated spike. This year alone, five earthquakes above magnitude 4 have struck the caldera, each one hammering home the message that the system is far from calm. Traditional monitoring counted around 12,000 earthquakes in the last three years. But artificial intelligence combing through the data found the real number is closer to 54,000. Most are shallow, clustered just a few kilometers below the surface, right where people live and work. Each day, the swarm continues, with magnitude 2 and magnitude 3 events, sometimes coming in bursts of dozens per hour. No single event has caused widespread destruction, but the relentless shaking is a warning. The ground is moving, and the pace is quickening. For residents, it is a daily reminder that Campi Flegre is not sleeping. The frequency, the strength, and the persistence of these quakes all point to pressure building below. Scientists track the escalation, more earthquakes, higher peaks, and no sign of relief. The question is not whether the unrest is real. The question is what is driving this relentless motion and how much more the system can take before something gives. In the heart of Pozzuoli, the ancient neighborhood of Rione Terra stands empty, a silent monument to loss. In the 1970s, rising ground forced thousands of families to leave their homes behind. The evacuation was supposed to be temporary. Instead, the streets, churches, and shops of Rione Terra have remained abandoned for nearly 50 years. Residents were scattered across new housing blocks, never allowed to return. For many, the real disaster was not fire or ash, but the slow erasure of a community. The panic began with a simple observation. Ferry passengers who once stepped down onto the pier now found themselves stepping up. A local journalist noticed the change and wrote a headline that read, The sea retreats, the volcano boils. The headline raced through Naples and beyond. Within days, national newspapers arrived, amplifying the alarm. Rumors grew faster than facts. People packed what they could carry and fled, fearing an eruption that never came. Decades later, that same journalist spoke of regret. The story had been true, but the consequences haunted him. Families lost homes and livelihoods, shops closed forever. The trauma of sudden displacement settled into memory, shaping how people viewed every new warning. When another crisis struck in the 1980s, the authorities ordered the evacuation of 40,000 more residents. Again, the magma stayed contained beneath the caprock. No eruption followed. Instead, the scars of upheaval deepened, and the label of false alarm took hold. For those who lived through it, the sound of suitcases scraping over cobblestones and the sight of empty windows became the symbols of disaster. Today, many in Pozzuoli and Naples remember these upheavals more vividly than any volcanic threat. Their skepticism is rooted in personal loss, in the knowledge that warnings can upend lives even when the earth itself holds steady. The memory of Rione Terra, its permanent evacuation, the media storm, and the decades of regret lingers over every new tremor, making trust and action harder with each passing year. Ground uplift at Campi Flegri is not a distant memory or a theoretical concern. It is happening now, and the numbers are staggering. Since 2005, GPS and satellite radar have measured the land in Pozzoli, rising by about 1.6 meters. That is the height of a kitchen table lifted not by construction, but by forces deep underground. In recent months, the pace has quickened, 
with the ground climbing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per month. Each centimeter is a sign of pressure accumulating below as magma and superheated fluids push upward, flexing the Earth's surface. At the Vesuvius Observatory, INGV scientists study these changes in real time. Their instruments capture the subtle stretching and cracking of the caldera's cap rock, the rigid layer that acts as a lid over the volatile system. Laboratory tests on rock samples from beneath Pozzuoli reveal a troubling pattern. Repeated episodes of uplift have left the cap rock with only about one-third of its original strength. What was once a tough, fiber-reinforced barrier is now riddled with microfractures, its tensile strength dropping from over 70 megapascals to less than 50 in some zones. Each uplift event, each new fracture, brings the system closer to a critical threshold. The strain is not evenly spread. High-resolution maps show that the greatest stress falls along old fault lines and in zones where the cap rock is already thin or damaged. Seismic clusters often light up these weak spots, confirming what the models predict, the crust is being pushed to its limits. INSAR and GPS data tell a consistent story. Uplift is not just a surface phenomenon, but a sign of deep, persistent deformation. For the scientists monitoring these changes, the numbers are not just data points. They are warnings that the system's ability to contain its own pressure is fading, and that the next phase may not be as forgiving. Eight kilometers beneath Pozzuoli, a reservoir of molten rock presses upward, hidden from view but central to every tremor and every sigh of steam escaping the caldera. Scientists mapped this chamber in 2008, confirming what many had suspected. Campi Flegre is not just restless, but primed by a deep, volatile supply. Above this reservoir, the cap rock has lost much of its original strength, fractured by decades of uplift and stress. The system is no longer as resilient as it once was. Over the last 5,500 years, Campi Flegre has erupted at least 23 times. Most of these events were not headline-grabbing cataclysms, but sudden violent steam blasts, phreatic eruptions, where superheated water flashes to steam and tears through the weakened crust. These explosions can happen with little warning, driven less by lava than by pressure and the unpredictable interplay of heat and groundwater. Recent scientific meetings have raised the probability of such an event. The signals are subtle, a quickening of gas emissions, a spike in fumarole temperatures, a cluster of shallow quakes, but the warning might come only hours before an explosion. The lesson from Rabul in Papua New Guinea weighs heavily here. In 1994, after years of rumbling, Rabul's caldera erupted with just 27 hours of clear warning, barely enough time for authorities to act. The parallels are unsettling. At Campi Flegre, the mechanics allow for the same kind of rapid escalation. The next eruption may not announce itself with weeks of drama, but arrive almost without notice, steam and ash surging into a city that sits, day after day, on the edge of this invisible horizon. Civil protection officials in Naples work under a system where every color means something more than just a warning. The official alert scale for Campi Flegre runs from green to red, with each step tied to strict legal protocols. Yellow brings heightened monitoring. Orange, by law, triggers evacuation preparations for hundreds of thousands. Red means mandatory evacuation, no discretion, no delay. These thresholds are written into national statutes and regional emergency plans binding the hands of those tasked with public safety. But the recent crisis has exposed a dilemma. The signs, accelerating uplift, relentless earthquakes, Caprock losing strength, have pushed the system to the edge of orange. Yet the memory of past evacuations haunts every decision. Officials remember the chaos and backlash of the 1980s when tens of thousands left their homes and the eruption never came. They also remember the courtrooms of L'Aquila, where after the 2009 earthquake, six scientists and a senior civil protection official were put on trial for manslaughter. The charge was offering reassurances that led people to stay put. The scientists were ultimately acquitted, but the message was clear. If you underestimate the risk and disaster strikes, you could face criminal charges. If you overreact and nothing happens, the public may never trust you again. To navigate this bind, authorities introduced an unofficial category called dark yellow. 
It is not in the statutes, but it has become a way to signal heightened danger without triggering the automatic machinery of evacuation. Dark yellow allows for more urgent warnings and more visible preparation, but it stops short of the legal chaos that orange would unleash. Behind closed doors, officials debate every tremor, weighing the risk of waiting too long against the scars of acting too soon. The shadow of L'Aquila hangs over every meeting, every press conference, every decision. In this climate, the rules are clear, but the path forward is anything but. 80,000 people live directly above the restless caldera in Pozzuoli. Half a million fill the official red zone, packed into towns and neighborhoods that trace the sunken rim of the ancient volcano. The wider Naples metro area, with more than 6 million residents, stretches like a living mosaic across the slopes, valleys, and crater floors. Every street, school, and hospital within reach of a system that could change overnight. In theory, evacuation plans exist for each layer. The red zone, drawn by civil protection authorities, covers the highest risk neighborhoods. Maps mark out escape routes, gathering points, and temporary shelters. But the numbers dwarf the logistics. Moving 80,000 people from Pozzuoli alone would jam every road within minutes. Scaling up to half a million becomes a question not just of traffic, but of survival, how to keep order, how to shelter the vulnerable, how to prevent panic from causing more harm than the volcano itself. Yet when authorities called for a full-scale evacuation drill in Pozzuoli, only about 30 people showed up. Another recent rehearsal at the Port of Naples relied on school groups to fill the ranks. For most residents, the drills feel distant, abstract compared to the daily grind of work and family, or the memory of past evacuations that left scars but no eruption. The gap between official plans and public readiness grows wider with every new swarm of quakes. Some volcanologists have broken from the cautious consensus. They argue that, at minimum, Pozzuoli should be evacuated now before the next escalation leaves no time to act. Their warnings cut through the noise. The system is more stressed than ever, the population more exposed, and the margin for error vanishingly thin. But their voices compete with fatigue, skepticism, and the sheer scale of what a real evacuation would mean. A city on the move, hundreds of thousands at risk, and no certainty about what comes next. In a quiet office at Stanford, an AI researcher loads years of seismic data from Campi Flegre into a new algorithm. The result is a revelation. The caldera has not produced 12,000 earthquakes since 2022, as official records claimed, but 54,000. Most are tiny, too faint for human senses or even older instruments. When mapped, these microquakes cluster in patterns that tell a deeper story. Instead of a simple swarm, the earthquakes trace out a shifting network, migrating from deeper roots toward the shallowest layers under Pozzuoli. The AI lens sharpens the picture. Quake clusters have grown denser at depths of 1 to 2 kilometers, precisely where the cap rock is thinnest and most damaged. The software detects a ring fault encircling the area of uplift, a structure that had gone unnoticed in decades of manual analysis. This ring fault is not just a line on a map, it is a potential pathway for larger ruptures, and it could produce magnitude 5 earthquakes. The geometry matches the arc of ground deformation visible in satellite data, linking invisible movements below to the swelling surface above. The migration of seismicity toward the surface is more than a curiosity. Each new cluster marks a zone where the crust is bending, cracking, and losing strength. The AI's expanded catalog transforms the crisis from a handful of dramatic events into a relentless, evolving process. For the first time, scientists can watch the unrest unfold in near real time, tracing how stress moves through the caldera's fractured shell. The picture that emerges is not of a system winding down, but of one growing more unstable with every passing month. At the Picciarelli fumarole field, a constant plume of steam and gas rises from the fractured earth, carrying the unmistakable signature of deep unrest. On any given day, around 600 tons of carbon dioxide vent into the air from this single site, a volume rivaling emissions from a small city. Scientists track these numbers through a web of sensors and sampling stations, watching for sudden spikes that might signal a shift underground. 
when gas flux increases, it often comes hand in hand with uplift pulses and earthquake swarms, hinting at mounting pressure below the surface. But the tools meant to keep watch are not infallible. Periodic outages in the sensor network have left critical gaps in the data, sometimes for hours, sometimes for days. Engineers race to repair weather battered stations and recalibrate malfunctioning analyzers, knowing that even a brief blind spot could mean missing the first signs of a brewing crisis. Staff at the Vesuvius Observatory have voiced concerns about aging equipment and the challenge of maintaining coverage across such rugged, active terrain. Despite new technologies, drones, infrared cameras, and remote gas detectors, the uncertainty lingers. The network can catch a sharp rise in carbon dioxide or a sudden vent temperature spike, but not every precursor is clear, and not every warning will arrive in time. The evidence is there in the numbers and the steam, but so is the risk that something crucial could slip by unnoticed. For all the advances in monitoring, the caldera still guards its secrets. Those tasked with watching it know how easily the story can change in a single unseen moment. Today, over 500,000 people live atop a caldera, where the crust now holds only one-third of its original strength. With ground rising and daily quakes, the next warning may be our last. In a city built on uncertainty, preparedness isn't just wise, it's survival. The volcano's silence is not safety. Stay aware, stay ready. What would you do if tomorrow brought the signal?